Hi y'all, this is a um, video I have entitled The Millstone Warning. Um, and Lord God, would you help me with this message, Holy Spirit, just bring your uh, truth and your light into this in Jesus' name. The scripture I'm going to read right now, there's one in Mark 9, chap uh, chapter 9, verse 42, and there's one in Luke 17, verse 2. I'm going to read the one from Mark, but they both say pretty much the same thing. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. These are the words of Jesus, just FYI. Um, so a little context, a little background you need to know is, number one, the little ones are little believers in faith. They are the spiritually immature. They are the people that need um, the milk of the word. They're not ready for meat or chewier things of the faith, the theological discussions and debates, the things that are um, deeper levels and layers um, into God's word. These are, the, these are the people that just need to be in their Bibles. The spiritually immature. And... The millstone, so you know, is this giant circular wheel-like rock that they would use to crush their grain. They'd have an animal pulling it round and round the circle, and it would crush the grain into wheat, uh, gr gr grind the, the grains into flour. Um, so what Jesus is saying here is it's better for you to drown with a giant stone around your neck than to cause one of my spiritually young people to stumble in their walk with me. And the reason I bring this up, I'm, I'm going to give you a short background. I have been doing um, YouTube videos um, and teachings and things for, for a couple years now uh, with little to no followers. It didn't make any difference to me. Um, I did it because I thought God had said to, for me to do it. I knew my mom was watching them. Hi, Mom. I love you. Um, and, and really, it was as much to uh, monitor my own walk and my own um, progression in the Lord and, and dreams and things like that. As it was for anything else. However, um, once I had a, a rapture dream, all of a sudden I now have more subscribers and I have more commentators and I have more followers and that's that's lovely. Um, but the nice thing about having spent several years in the Lord and, and understanding a little more of who I am and thinking that I'm closer on the mature side is y'all can't steal my peace. I love you. I love the faith family that I found on here. Some of you are very encouraging and edifying. And some of you, if you have disagreements, you do it so gracefully and with such a peace that I, I, I so appreciate that. And I thank you. We, I think that all believers who are blood-bought, born-again believers in Jesus Christ should be able to disagree theologically but die on the same hill, which was the hill of Calvary, in which Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for our sins, was resurrected three days later by the Holy Spirit so that we could, um, so that our sins could have, could be atoned and we could once again um, stand justified in front of the Father underneath the blood of Jesus alone, okay? So that's the hill we die on, which is the gospel, okay? Any blood-bought, born-again, Holy Spirit-filled believer is going to tell you Jesus is the answer. And beyond that, the rest of it is a learning curve. And when I was several years younger in the Lord and just learning some of this stuff, the things I'm going to say today would have been way over my head. But I need to say this because there are religious people here on YouTube who are wearing their Bible like a sledgehammer. And and like I said, you can't steal my peace. Whatever you comment on, on my videos, thanks, God bless you. And if we disagree, we disagree. I know who my Abba is, okay? I know where to take, um, I know where to take my dreams, I, I know to take them right into the word of God. I know that if he doesn't confirm them with his word, that it's not worth talking about. I know that if um, if there's something I'm being convicted on, maybe maybe even something that somebody posted in a comment and I've been convicted, I know where to take it. And it's not to you, and I love y'all, but you're not my Abba. I take it to God in prayer and I say, is there truth in this? Do I, do I need to readjust anywhere? Because that's what you do in humility when you're a child of God in your walk. But there are people, especially on YouTube, there's no social media platform that's safe for people who are trying to walk with the Lord. But for the little ones, the young in the faith who are just learning to walk, it's not hard to knock a toddler down. And I'm telling you, some of you commenters are, are walking around like the Pharisees, just waiting to theologically disagree with something about maybe how God speaks to someone, um, or maybe 
of their theological position on something, and you are just trying to sweep the legs out from underneath that toddler. And I am telling you, there is a warning in the Bible from Jesus Christ himself that says, hey, it would be better if I drowned you in the sea with a big rock than me catching you, letting one of my little kids stumble because we are all at different stages of maturity. You cannot look at somebody and know how mature they are in the Lord Jesus. You could be 90 years old and three days old in the faith. You can't tell. And so some of these people who are attempting to do what they think is is right and what, what God has told them to do by sharing dreams and visions or sharing a revelation from scripture or teaching or yeah, some of these people who are doing this on public platforms have not quite grasped who they are in Christ yet. And when those comments come, it sweeps their legs out from underneath them. Or it misdirects them into a into a place that God's not asking them to go to yet because they're not mature enough yet. They're still little. They still need the milk, okay? We need to be, as believers in, in the faith, we need to be the ones that pick the toddlers up, okay? Be that parent that comes along and like, ooh, you tripped and fell here. Okay, honey, let me... <laughs> Let me help you up here um, and, and get your hand back on the Bible to study yourself because they don't need you. They need the Holy Spirit. They need, they need God. They need to hear from him and how he is leading them um, because God will guide each of his children differently. If you have more than one child, you know they're all different. They come from the same gene pool, but they are not the same kid. And he speaks to us all differently. And he teaches us all differently. And we all have different gifts. We are part of one body. We've got a pinky and, and you know, somebody's an elbow and somebody's a nose and somebody's an ear. And there we're all different parts of the body that have to learn. This is how we work. This is what God is calling us to do and who he's calling us to be as his body working together. If one of us feels it, all of us feel it. You, you all, you Christians, <laughs> who like to listen to videos for what you can critique, you need to start remembering not only the millstone, but that God is asking for the mature to help the immature grow. Okay? Be that voice for them. And it's okay to disagree. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Um, take it all back to the Word of God. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. So good to see you again.